So look, is everybody ready to, um, with their three things and ready to contribute those? Can I ask you to do that now? Oh, look, I've got some shakes of the heads and some nods. I think I'd like to run with whatever you've got now so that we can get on to the next pointer. So what I'd like to invite you to do is, is volunteer, really. I, I would prefer not to go to every single table and every single plan, but I'd like to get volunteers who would like to share what their three points are, and we'll see how far we get in the time available. So first volunteer? Good. Thank you. Okay, uh, three priorities for development when you're implementing our action plan. The first one is to identify community needs, so rural, rural, remote and urban, elders, men, women, youth, pregnant women, disability, anybody. You've got to know what your community wants. Secondly, especially for me as being the CEO, is to make sure that the action plan aligns with the priorities of the strategic plan for the organisation. If it doesn't, you shouldn't be doing it. Really, really important. I report to a board, the board kick my mum if I don't do the right thing. Identify baseline data information, so focus groups, surveys, clinical reports, NKI reports, OcaStream reports, Beach reports, whatever reports you can get. Talk to the um, gentleman here from Health Infonet, get that stuff. And I've got a fourth one, because that's what we do in Melbourne. Share our action plans. Desley's going to hate me. We... <laughs> I oh, know, anywhere <laughs> frightened people. So this is what Penny was talking about yesterday, knowledge exchange. We might be doing something at Melbourne at bars, which might be mind-blowingly ridiculous, but it works. And then you guys might have something that we can use. So as CEO of VARS, I'm putting it out there. If you want to see our action plan, you can see it. We will send it to you. So, uh, sorry, Jason, I've just um, double checked, and yes, most certainly anybody can do that um, within your organisation. You can share that. Whereabouts can you share it on this flowchart is probably the question. So, when it is gone, um, grant recipient submits final action plan. That is when we will see the final one, as well as obviously it goes through the department. We can share it if you like, or you can share it if you like. Okay, so that is to totally acceptable and it's totally up to you guys. But we were wondering where you can win in that process, so there you go. Okay, thanks, Desley. Thanks, Jason. Let's um, invite someone else to either come up here or we'll bring the mic to you. Hands up, yep, over there. Would you like to come up or shall I bring the mic? I'll bring the mic. Oh, you're coming. You're coming. You're coming. Good. 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 <laughs> it's interesting. Um, very similar to your to the previous one. Um, I think the first thing was around getting your own house in order. There was that sense that if you're going to go out and work with community and work with other organisations, that sort of stuff. You really wanted to have your own smoke-free policies, not only in place, but working and reviewing some of that sort of stuff was a real priority um, for developing the plan. And the second thing related to community feedback and focus groups. So how were they going to have focus groups uh, with vendors of tobacco, for example, with consumers? you needed that community feedback to do your planning. So getting input from focus groups, consumer groups, vendors, and pulling the data from government and other uh, sources to really do that needs analysis was a high priority. And to do any of that, you needed some staff on the ground. So um, very similar to the previous group. Thank you so much, excellent. Um, Just have another would you like to come at the front? I'm, I'm actually asking people to come up here now because apparently it's being videoed, so we get the we we get the voices of the individual down at the front here. So thank you. I'll invite Grand Pacific in a moment. Yeah, after this one. 
Um, at our table, we had um, organisations that were at different stages of developing their action plans or having submitted their action plans. So we've got some a variety of priorities. Um, for those who are still developing the action plan, they're looking for time to bring staff together to be able to pull the action plans together. Um, and then also identifying the appropriate measures for the performance indicators. Um, another priority was about um, having a reporting template um, to start to be able to see how we're going to report against the action plan. Um, also, our priority is about um, identifying the appropriate tools or developing the appropriate data collection tools um, for, for the, a number of different activities. It won't just be one or two tools, it'll be a number and then also training staff to be able to use those tools, which has already been identified. Um, and then also recruiting staff. Thank you so much. We should be applauding people, I think. So just invite Avril to come up to the front now. Okay. We've got three points we'd like to share. The first one is the action plan is a two and a half year action plan. Is there scope to change it after one year if there's evidence emerging from different grant recipients that there's something that's really good that's working? Can we score something out and then put that in instead? Um, second one was on the action plan, the rationale column, I'm assuming that has to have um, here's studies that show that this piece of thing works. Could the best practice unit pull together like an evidence summary um, of what works so we can pick and choose stuff or do we all have to do literature reviews ourselves? And the reporting timelines for reporting these back, um, half our table already had those, half didn't. So who sends them out and why do some people have that information and some don't? Thanks. Thanks, Avril. Hello, everybody. Um, we had three organisations on our table. Um, first one, CAMS, um, Kimberley Aboriginal Medical Service. Um, the first one was organisational action plan um, to include monitoring and evaluation. I um, can't really go into details because it's not my comment. Um, baseline data collection was their number two. Um, so, and number three was upskilling all their team to understand the new program. Um, our other organisation, Aqua, um, is their number one thing was putting everything down in a simplified program. Number two, smarter thinking on how to report the information. And number three, data collection. Our three things at Danny Nongan District Aborigines Cooperative were recruitment and upskilling retention, especially on a one and a half, possible two and a half year plan. Um, number two, getting whole organisation on board and involved and supportive in what the Tackling Indigenous Smoking team are doing. And number three, communicating our action plan to our organisation and in brackets, staff. Thank you. Thanks so much. Some common themes, whoops. Some common themes between those organisations about communicating with the teams when, when people go home from this uh, workshop. So an important one also, recruitment and retention of key staff and I think these are common across many organisations here, so thanks for saying it so clearly. Invite somebody else, we'll perhaps do a couple more. Somebody else like to come up? Um, hello everyone. Um, I got three priorities. Uh, the first two are on developing action plan. So the first one is to reconcile and simplify as per the new template because in the last six, seven months, we received three templates to write on. So it's just really dif difficult to put on things 
The second one is to define or identify the evaluation strategies to gather the data matching with the objectives. Um, the third one is about the implementation to build on the existing partnerships with the communities and key stakeholders and to identify the community needs. And I think the, the fourth one is to get the input from the community and the focus groups. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, another uh, good set of um, priorities there, which are very clear, very practical. Um, one more person would like to come up. Maybe we've covered everybody. OK, well, look, as before, we will um, take note of what's on these sheets and, and write them up and summarise them. I think it's a really good representation of where people are at right now. One thing I take from that, and I'm sure Desley does too, is that there's some common ground, but there's also people in different stages of development of the work they're doing, which you would expect anyway in, in, in the TIS program. We're just going to go on to the second point that we wanted to talk to you about. So the second one is about um, progress reporting and measuring performance and how that's shaping up in your mind. Now, I don't want to spend too long on this, so I'm thinking of perhaps we could get some, just some simple questions and comments from the floor, because the last session covered much of this subject in some detail. What do you think, Desley? Should we do it that way? Yeah. So just interested in any other thoughts that people have had on the subject of measuring performance and progress reporting. And we'll pass the microphone to you. People have privately spoken to me. If you feel you'd like to share those thoughts more publicly, you'd be very welcome. One over here. Hi, um, I'm Emma from CAMS. I'm not sure if this is exactly uh, what you want from this section, but I, I guess, again, people uh, in our table and probably more broadly across the room have raised those concerns about how to operationalise some of the performance indicators or the measurement tools, very much like my comrade behind me was saying. There's certain things when you read through the performance indicators or that we're mentioning in our activity plans, I imagine quite globally, which would be great starting points for the National Best Practice Unit to help us with tools. One of them is around the quality of partnerships that you mentioned before. Mm. Uh, I have no doubt that there are a number of process-based evaluation tools or partnership tools which have been reviewed, evaluated and are considered effective. It would be great to, to have some examples or to have the National Best Practice Unit help us to, to look at a couple of key examples and to maybe provide the webinar type training that was mentioned before around how we can implement them, uh, not only as managers but also other members of our teams. So these would need to be materials that were, were plain language and not particularly time consuming. Hmm. Uh, the other kind of standard tool that I think could be really helpful uh, across the board would be around message recall. Certainly um, most organisations would be having some sort of social marketing component. The performance indicators have asked for, for message recall, positive message recall. I would assume again that there is something that could be developed or that you could provide us with certain examples of how focus groups are run or how message recall events can be done in a way that's simple, effective and you know, ultimately non-invasive for our clients. So they're probably two things that I would, I would ask back to the National Best Practice Unit for some assistance on that may have traction for all of us. I think so too and thanks Emma for your question but it's exactly the kind of conversation I was having in the break with different people. So it perhaps gives me an opportunity just to talk about a couple of those um, examples of, of what you mentioned there, Emma. The, the dashboards, I was asked, you know, is there a program, some software that will make us a dashboard? The way that we do our dashboards is that we have a, a designer who takes the data and draws the dashboard and she's got a template that she uses. So we don't have any U-Butte kind of software that does that. It's more like advanced Excel, really. So what we can do is make those templates available so that people can make up dashboards without having to invent it from scratch. Um, although you'll still need to actually plug the data in to, 
to make up the illustration, but it's actually not so technical a job once you've got the template. So that's one concrete thing we can do, um, and which we will do in response to your point, Emma. Uh, in the case of focus groups, I'm, I'm, as you probably can tell from what I said before, I'm a big fan of focus groups. I just think they're so revealing if you get the, the mood in the room and the right people there, but it doesn't happen automatically. So there's a lot of techniques and tools and tips and so on for, for getting an effective focus group to happen. And we are working on that and we'll develop some guidelines and some tips around questions and processes in focus groups that I think once they're written down and people get a chance to look at it, will feel that it's actually not that complex to do providing you've got the right uh, understanding of how to do it. So we'll do some work in that area and whenever there's a chance to work individually with people or in fact in jurisdictional workshops, if that's a subject that people think is important, there's no reason why we can't practice some of those processes. Yeah. Um, the, the third point just relates to something that Penny's been working on. Penny's a very busy and productive person in the last week or so she's sent around drafts of lots of information about partnerships for comment internally within our unit. So I think she's pretty close to having some information available soon that will provide exactly what you're saying, Emma, about ways of measuring the quality of partnerships, way to define partnerships and relationships. We, we're working through what we think is best practice before we release it to the, to the, to the broader group because we don't want to be irresponsible about putting stuff out that's mm. just anything. Better that we put something out that we feel is worthwhile and relevant. Um, and, so oh, I hope I've responded to your point. Yeah, Desley. Yep. And don't underestimate the power of that portal, because once that's up and running, uh, we'll have a lot of information on there. And it's also, again, that yarning place as well, too, is um, an extraordinary place for you guys to have conversations with each other. So don't underestimate the power of that portal. So we, this is the first time I've met more than one grant recipient at a time, so it's overwhelming you know, for me in terms of all that I'm hearing, but it certainly reinforces for me the things that need to be done, and I'm sure it does for my colleagues too. So I so appreciate you being open and uh, clear about what you think is important. Another question over here. Yeah. Yes, please, right, yeah. Uh, just a question about if there is a um, reporting template yet because that changed a lot over the years as well and the first um, lot of reports we had to do it was quite open and then the department tried to make the um, reporting onerous less and then we only had 200 words to be able to report on outcomes so I was wondering what how we might report now and if that's going to change. Probably outside my immediate level of knowledge Desley is that something you can comment on? The, temp the template for reporting. Um, the template for reporting. Yeah. yeah um, we, got, we have not got a template for reporting. Oh, sorry, because we can work on the action plan, but we've never ever. I've never received any feedback when I've submitted a report, so I never know if I'm meeting the outcomes expected. So if we're going to put so much time into developing an action plan, I'd like to know that we're meeting the requirements of the reporting and um, we're, you know, we're travelling OK. Yeah, absolutely. The, the uncertainty that you might be seeing is just about where it sits with it between the department and the MBPU, I think. So, yeah. Do, yeah. 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 so we have been doing some work developing something, but um, I think we perhaps need to have a conversation with the department around um, whether they're happy with the, the, the latest draft. Yeah, is that fair, Helen? Yeah, and I think at that point, once um, every, every party's happy, then we'll be able to share that. There's a question down the back and then down the front here, thanks. Thanks very much. Um, it's Ron, Grand Pacific Health. Um, I want to comment on two things. One's progress and the other one is how it's shaping up in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, when I came here, I was particularly nervous about the reporting requirement, the measurements, uh, the, what I perceived as additional data collection 
Um, because what we tend to do is put in a tender and then the expectation is that that's what you're going to do. That's what you're contracted to do. And then when you get another template, the expectation is, oh, well, now you've got to fill that in. And when you get an NKPI, the expectation is you need to follow that. Added that all up. We are actually quite a compliant lot, thanks to the Department of Health. That's how we function. That's how we retain our money. In, in some ways, I've sort of felt over the last day and a half, it's not that bad, you know. Close enough is good enough. Just collect a few. Just change your action plan. You want to change your budget, that's fine. That in a way gives me comfort, but in another way is a whole new environment to work in. Which brings me to progress, and it's been mentioned a few times, it's May. You know, we are almost six months in to this program already. You know, we are looking at not having expended funds. At the end of the day, Helen is by far the most powerful person in this room. She holds my funds. So, you know, the help is overwhelming and appreciate it. But at the end of the day, there are some really practical funding issues that we need to deal with. So just to comment on, I will provide feedback on the action, sorry, on the action plan. Not sure what that means. Like, I'm sure I'm welcoming the feedback, but does it mean I have to change it? Does it mean it won't get approved unless I satisfy the requested changes? Sort of these, who do I report to? Who, who decides what it is that I do creates some practical issues? That's just where I'm at. This was another conversation that I had with um, some colleagues as I moved around during the exercise earlier. Um, I don't think I want to comment on that yet because I'd like to get um, the department ready to say something about that. Helen, are you in a position to comment and respond to what Ron said? Should we just get the, we'll just get you the mic, yeah. So I was saying that I see multiple components to that question, so that perhaps I'm not uh, on the impulse then going to answer all aspects of it and maybe I need to take some of it on notice and be clear about where the issue is and interpret for you. But I think the essential thing is that we're saying we've opened up some sort of flexibility and that actually creates some uncertainties. So you've got the marrying of you saying, well, the, every region's different, you've got local needs that you want to address, and so that your responses will be all different. But at the same time, we've got a compliance system with funding, which seems to have a certain rigidity, and there's certain comforts in having that rigidity. Uh, so you know where you are, you know what kind of reporting you've got to do. I think. What we've tried to say from the outset is we're recognising that we're uh, opening some things up and that's where we've got the support structures with the National Best Practice Unit and the evaluation framework. But in doing that, yes, not everything is answered and not everything is altogether at the time that you want it. We tried something very ambitious in putting all those pieces together in trying to make it all work at once and that was tied in with the government funding cycles and tied in with uh, the need to try to uh, make sure there's continuity from one program to the other, staff and uh, recruitment issues and so on. So we have tried to have the grant start as soon as possible, which wasn't before the 1st of January, and we engaged the people to be the next National Best Practice Unit and the evaluators before then to try to have it as up and running as we could in tandem with you. It still has some difficulties. I think they've done a fantastic job in getting as far as we have 
and some of the answers uh, are, are not necessarily immediately available, but that's the purpose too in having this workshop before we've got all the answers. We need to know your questions better. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, where we've got requirements for uh, saying you still have to report, uh, the, uh, that's why we do see that there's a reporting template required. For a lot of the community controlled services, the reporting can be one great big long uh, chart where you've got one line for each um, bit of funding that you get. What we've uh, managed to have though is a separate template for the TIS that's not within that main structure for the very purpose of you being able to map from your action plans to what kind of reporting so that we can see the linkages to what you've planned to do versus what you achieved and what you actually have as your outcomes. So if you want to um, document in better detail those kind of questions, for which I don't think that as a general answer might have answered, please give it to NBPU and we'll do our best to make sure that you get detailed answers. Thanks, Helen. I'd like to, there'll be another opportunity after lunch actually when Lynn Allen's going to be leading a session, so there'll be another chance to, to bring up topics of this level of importance. And, and thanks, Ron, for bringing it up now. Um, what I'd like to do now before lunch is just go to the final question that was on our list, which Desley's going to talk to. And that's the roadmap for TIS. Desley's going to just set out how she thinks unfolding over the coming months. Desley. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Now, this may make a noise. Oh, no, it's good. All right, does everybody know about their jurisdictional workshop dates? Please say yes. And why do you, don't you know? I'll let you know where they are. In Brisbane, it's on Tuesday, the 14th of June. Um, in, sorry? All one day, these are all one day, one day workshops. Um, in Melbourne, it, we're looking at the 27th of July. Obviously, these are all for um, uh, grant recipients within that state or territory. Uh, uh, South Australian mob are here in Adelaide on the 29th of July. Northern Territory in Darwin on the Tuesday, the 30th of August. New South Wales uh, in Sydney on the 21st of September. And I don't think that's a state of origin night. I made sure of that. In Canberra, or ACT in Canberra, will be on the 23rd of September. And Western Australia will be in Perth on um, Wednesday the 19th of October. We will... We are happy to get feedback from you guys on what you would like to see happening at those jurisdictional workshops. Uh, this session here now and for the rest of the day, please come up to me and tell me what you would like. You know, we've got a bit of time from now until your workshop. Um, give me some ideas. We want those workshops as well to be as productive for you as possible. Okay, by then we should have the portal going. We, we, you know, we encourage feedback. Um, at those workshops and definitely any time earlier than that. Um, also, we'll be working out with you guys um, a, an engagement plan, a communication plan on how we maintain that contact with you. Because that's the other thing. Yes, we've got the portal and everything like that, but we, we want to make sure that you're aware that we're here for you at any time. Everyone should have in their pack my business card with my details on there, by all means email, phone me, anything, you know, anytime within reason. And I will answer your responses. Okay. Um, as far as the unit also, we'll be also looking at uh, your workforce development and capacity as well too, so we'll have a yarn with you around that because I know a lot of you are still doing recruitment um, and we'll, we'll work with you on how you would like to see that rolled out. 
uh, it would have been good to do some activity, but everybody had, are at different stages in this room, so with regards to their workforce. Okay. Um, so everybody has got the dates for the jurisdictional workshops. As far as the next national workshop, we will uh, let you know about that. It may be um, the next financial year. Okay, but we'll, we'll definitely let you know. And it'll be good if we can all come back to Adelaide for that too, but we'll see how the weather is. Is there any questions? Please, please, also at 2.15, that Q&A session, it is really, really important you do not leave here without asking the question. If you want to ask the question through me, that's fine. You know, we don't want anyone going out the room or on their plane and saying, oh, I should have asked that question to the department or the MBPU or to Anne, you know, to Circle or even Cathy and or Neil. Um, please ask the question. So have a think about that over lunch. Um, but in saying that, if you if you remember later, did we swap them over? Yeah. yeah okay. So at three o'clock, there is that panel session. Is anybody leaving early? Nathan and Craig, um, can you leave questions with us, please? and we'll get those back to you. And we will know, if it's coming to me, we'll know it was them two that asked that question. <laughs> okay. Is everybody happy with that? Is everyone happy? I don't want you to go away feeling unhappy or unsure about things. We don't want things lingering. Yep. You certainly can. Oh, sorry. Yeah, just um, in regards to those um, workshops, yep. we're obviously first cab off the rank. Um, we haven't received any written notification about that. And the, I have asked you previously, um, we've got close to 40 staff members in our consortium. Yes. Now, them flying to Brisbane for a day costs money and takes money away from our communities. Um, so what support is in place for that? Are we expected to have all of our staff members at that day? And if, the, if not, it's not really beneficial for our teams having just team leaders because mm. the team leaders and managers are across everything that's going on in the ground. It's mm. the guys on the ground that need to go to those kind of workshops and get some upskilling and, and some education on, on what needs to happen on the ground. So I just think firstly that there's the fact that we've had no written notification that that's when our workshop is on is a bit poor. Um, and we should have had some negotiation around the day because our guys uh, run programs daily. So. Taken, we're taken away from our communities by doing that, so I just think it's not really good. Can, um, do, can I leave that response to the panel? And I'm sorry about that, um, because that is a valid question, of course. Um, and we do understand that your particular organisation do have a vast, vast area, as does others as well too, but um, and I honestly don't know how much is in your budget with regards to uh, travelling costs and things like that. So, yeah, um, the I know the dates were sent out for jurisdictional workshops. Yeah, and I had mentioned that when I did visit. Yeah, and our yeah, yeah and, and newsletters. Okay. Um, Come, we send a weekly newsletter out, but the list of recipients to that is the list that we have from the department about who your contact is on your, on your um, application. So that may mean that the organisation who now needs to have the person in the organisation who's getting that newsletter isn't it may not be related to the program directly. Um, yeah. So um, if it's coming to the CEO, then good. That's not the case in all organisations. Um, but we do ask that you pass it on. And if you need us to direct it in other ways as well, please do let us know so that we've got that list. Mm. 
I have also Position. got a yellow. I have also got a yellow sheet because, um, yeah, I got that feedback before. Um, there's a yellow sheet outside on that registration desk um, that says where you would like, whose email shall I send all of the PowerPoints and of course all of the action plans to. If you want to put five people down from your organisation, do that. If that's, a, if that's a better way of doing things, then you know at least one of us have got it. So if you want to put 10 people down, do that. So that is out there. So again, we're not getting, uh, you're getting all the information as you can. And like I say, I've always said, phone, phone us, phone, phone us. We've got an 1800 number, we've got an email as well too. That, um, Christy. Can you get a copy of your action plan? Uh, we've got, yeah. Yep. By all means, yep. Desley, the newsletters will also all be up on the portal so anybody can access them and read them. Mm -hmm. Thanks. This is sort of an operational um, question. We sit um, between WA, Northern Territory and South Australia, jurisdictional meetings can we go to any one of them? Because to go to Perth, because we're mainly in Western Australia, is going to cost us an absolute fortune. To come to Adelaide is much cheaper. To go to Darwin sort of halfway between. Depends where I want a holiday, of course, but... Uh, <laughs> and, I do, and I do have 20... Uh, well, 25 to 30 staff, so if I bring them all, it's probably about 60,000 bucks. Yes. The answer to that is yes. Yes, what? Lawn Seston is going to Melbourne. Okay. So you can Beautiful. most definitely Thank you. swap that. But in saying that, can you get permission from the other mob too? Is that all right? Do you, do you know I understand? So if, you are, if you're wanting to go to Northern Territory, yep. can you ask the Northern Territory mob, is it all right if I can come over there? Oh, sure. Yep. You know, we've got a panel that's going to be happening. <laughs> Hello, um, Desley. I'm also in the same boat with we're in Broken Hill. Adelaide's closer than Sydney, so yep. can we come to Adelaide if that's easier? Yep. Oh, to Adelaide, yeah, of course you yep. can. Yeah, okay. everybody can come to Adelaide. Yeah, I just don't know whether New South Wales like us that much. Um, <laughs> We've got the postcode, but we don't have Wait the area until, code or the time yeah. zone, sorry. Okay, yeah. Wait until Craig and Nathan leave later, then we can... <laughs> By all means, work that out with the, with the other states, if you might, like, yeah. Um, let us know, let us know too then, and then, you know, we can help you approach that little discussion between each other. It's lunchtime, and it hasn't come a moment too soon. <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> Let's break for lunch. Think about questions. Thank you very much for your feedback. Again, just um, tap me on the shoulder if you want to ask any more questions or direct them to Steve or Rod or um, the national coordinator, Penny, Kathy and Neil, Lynn. There's a lot of people here. Thank you very much, everyone.